Doing Justin here. Today we are checking out Tore Down, famous as a Freddie King song written by his piano player Sonny Thompson. We're specifically going to be looking at Andy Fairweather Lowe's awesome rhythm guitar parts from the Clapton version from the Cradle to the Grave album. A fantastic album, really, really nice rhythm guitar part, this one to learn. We're going to look at the Clapton one in a separate lesson. Uh, but the, the general gist of what we're going to be doing today is I'm going to talk about the individual riffs and how they're constructed over the course of the 12 bars then you're going to have to do some listening yourself to put the bits in the right order, okay? Because it, it's a, essentially just a few kind of riffs that you need to structure correctly to play along with the original recording. There are two main riffs in this tune, so of course we're going to talk about that, but I also want to go through a little bit the accents and the picking and, and some of the little variations and the subtle things that are important with a tune like this. I think uh, playing along with the original recording is a really, really, really key thing here, trying to pick up on the right amount of shuffle, you know, and, and really it's not just about the notes. The notes are the kind of the easy part. It's really kind of getting that right feel, and, and the best way to cop that sort of thing is playing along with the original recording. So let's get to a close-up and check out how to play it. So let's go through it one riff at a time and then we'll talk about how to kind of arrange it and the variation. So the first riff, we're going to do it in C first of all. So we're going to be playing the root note C, which is the third fret of the fifth string. We play that twice, it'll be a down and an up pick. Then I use my little finger, but you could use your third finger if you wanted to for the fifth fret on the third string. Two picks again. Then the first finger in the third fret of the third string. And then one note on the one pick on the fifth fret of the fourth string. That's the riff. So one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. So let's talk about the picking a little sec now. Um, it definitely wants to be alternate picking. So down, up, down, up, down. I think is really important here is that it's not so much a down and up as an in and out. And what I mean by that is if you think very kind of vertically, it kind of seems to make sense more, right? Yeah, your wrist is moving that way, the pick's going up and down, but there's something about the feel for this tune where I feel like it's going in and out. So it's going down, up. And when I'm going down, the string ends up resting on the string underneath. So right in, as opposed to down, up and down this way, right? It's going up and down this way. Down, up, down, up, down. And with each downstroke, it ends up touching the string underneath. And there's 
something about doing it that way that has a different feel. It changes the shuffle a bit. So it's something you just want to work on a little bit, nice and slow. Make sure you've got the accenting right. It's almost kind of dropping. It feels like my hand's dropping into the string. It's very, it's very relaxed. So it's going to go in and out. So it's a little bit more kind of wristy movement as well. Okay, so just spend a little bit of a time, you know, thinking about the, how, the, how the mechanics of that are working and try and get to that point where it feels really nice and loose and relaxed and you can play that riff well before you move on to doing the rest of the tune. So once you've got that riff sorted, let's put it into order for the first part of the tune. So it actually the song starts on the G, on the five chord. So we're going to play G. Okay, so that's going to be starting with the first finger on the third fret of the thickest string. Otherwise it's exactly the same. So everything we did on C, but down a string or up a string rather, up physically. And then to F. Okay, exactly the same thing. G, F, to C. Twice. Okay, that's the intro. So it's just a four bar intro. G, F, C. And that's where the vocal will come in and the first verse starts. Just a couple of things to note. Uh, after the last note of each riff, there's of course kind of an up feeling that the, the pick hand is going to go up or out, depending on which way you're thinking of it, before you're changing uh, to the next cycle of the riff. And sometimes you're going to hit an extra note. I noticed that I nearly always hit one here on the F. I'm just hitting the open string. Sometimes it's a muted note, sometimes it's the open string. That's totally fine. It doesn't really matter. And you can hear even on the original one, there's, there's some extra notes going in there that are sometimes just a muted note. Sometimes they're an open string. You know, as long as it sounds fine, it is fine. That's, you know, a really important thing. So once we get into the verse, it's a standard 12 bar blues in the key of C. So four bars of C, two bars of F, two bars of C, and then G, F, C, and C. So let's play through that, make sure you got that together. So one, two, three, four, C, C. And again, here's the fourth bar, now to F. F again, and back to C. Then to G, F, and C. Okay, now just on the last time, uh, the very end of the 12 bar sequence, quite often there's a fifth fret on the uh, fourth string, third fret on the third string, and then back to the fifth fret on the fourth string. So one and two and three and four triplet. So the rhythm for that would be one and two and three and four triplet. Okay, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Okay, so you've got that little down, up, down, and then to a down pick on the on the beginning of the next sequence again. So a little bit, sort of ever so slightly trickier there with the pick in hand, but nothing too much to worry about. So once you're through that first verse, we've got some stops. So probably the very first stop, you're just going to play the one note, the note C. I loved you, baby, with all my. Now I think it's a C7 that's being played there by Andy. I'm not 100% certain because there's a lot going on, uh, horn section and stuff as well, but it sounds to me like this version of a C7. So uh, second finger in the third fret of the fifth string, first finger in the second fret of the fourth string, and third finger in the third fret of the third string. Okay, that's a C7. And it's just going to be playing that on the beat. So, and again, and now we do a rundown. Okay, now I'm, that's a, it sounds like a baritone sax to me that's doing it on the original recording. I think the guitar is doing it. It doesn't matter if the guitar is not doing it. It sounds cool anyway. And that's just third fret on the fifth string, first fret, open, fifth string that is, and then third fret on the thickest string. That's just all on the beat. So from the stops, we go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, 
Okay, now we've got the second stops. Now the second set of stops, uh, we've got the C, two, three, four, one, 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 two, three, four. Okay, that's the, what's going on. It's still the stop on the C on the beat. But every second time there's a little side step from the D flat, which is one semitone higher, going into the C. So one, two, three, four, 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 one. And the very last time you can hear a little gliss up. It's not really a specific fret, I guess, second or third, somewhere there. Now it's going to this C7 further up the neck, I think. Again, this is kind of best guess because it's hard to hear it in the mix there. Um, I'm using my second finger on the eighth fret, muting the fifth on the eighth fret of the thicker string, muting the fifth string, third finger on the uh, eighth fret of the fourth string, and little finger on the ninth fret of the third string. So it's an eight, mute, eight, nine, mute, mute. Thinnest two strings are both muted. Now, it's quite common to play that with fingers one, two, and three as well. It's also quite common to use one, two, and four, okay? It doesn't really matter which grip you want to use. If you wanted to, you could play just a standard C7. If you find any of these kind of grips a bit difficult, you could go. Would work as well. So just slide up, and at the eighth fret, you're going to hit down with a C7 chord. Eight, ten, eight, nine, eight, eight, three, two, full uh, C7, which I don't think is the right one. Uh, looks to me like Eric's playing a little bit, the, the top part of that chord, and that uh, the lower part is handled by Andy. But that you know, it's hard to hear it in the mix, and it, it's a little bit. It's a blues jam, so you can choose how you want to do it anyway. Really, um, the second time through, I'm pretty sure I can hear the guitar now playing eighth notes on that walk down. <laughs> Okay, so it's exactly the same thing after the stops. It's going to go around that cycle of doing the F for two bars, C for two bars, and then G, F, C again. Uh, and it's the same notes that we had before, but hitting each note twice. Okay, so again, you can use your ears for that one. Now, we're into the underneath the solo now, and the riff changes a little bit. I think the riff changes in a real nice way. We have this. <laughs> And again, the same pattern moves around through the different chords. So we're just starting off with the first finger, third fret on the fifth string, then fifth fret on the third string with the third finger or fourth finger. It's going to roll over to play the fifth fret on the fourth string, then third fret on the third string, and then back to the fifth fret on the fourth string. One, two, and three, four. Okay, that's the first bar. One, two, and three. I'm changing the picking up, but that would be what I'd recommend you start with. Down, down, up, down, down. Now the second time, slightly different. The last note has changed and is going back to the higher octave. First time is that third finger on the fourth string. Second time it's going onto the third, uh, onto the third string. moves to the F, exactly the same pattern, we've just moved the root note. Okay, so that last note in each bar is moved there from the fifth string now to the fourth string. Fifth string, fourth string, back to C, same thing. G, okay, it's moving down to the fifth string, F, onto the fourth string. Okay, so it's exactly the same pattern. We've just shifted chord halfway through now. C. And 
then we're back in it. And that's pretty much the whole tune, really. The, the, the trick is, I mean, it's repeating those different bits again. Listen to the original recording. Uh, you want to be doing that anyway because you want to be picking up the grooves. But the, the, the really the key things are making sure that you're nice and tight because you're probably going to be playing along with a bass player and drummer as well at the same time. If you, either whether you're playing along with the original recording or if you're playing in a band, you know, the bass player will be playing the same stuff. So you really, really, really want to be tight, really tight, tight as a frog's bum, okay? So trying to get, or, or when you're playing along with the original or playing with a band, when you're playing this, you really want to be feeling it so that you and the bass player and the drummer are playing exactly in time. Okay, particularly playing along with the original recording, trying to really absorb that groove so that when you're playing along, you're exactly sitting with the band. That is the key thing for this kind of part. Tore Down really is a proper blues standard. It's the kind of thing that will get played a lot at blues jam night, so it's definitely worth learning the riff. Uh, the Freddie King one is, of course, a little different, but this is a kind of a classic uh, thing. You know, the Clapton version is very, very popular, and, and playing this riff through the tune is a, you know, it really it works really great, and you're likely to find, encounter other people that that you know know the same part, particularly bass players and drummers. And you know, as I said, that's that's a key thing here is getting the getting the right shuffle. And if you're playing a riff like this with the bass, you both want to be playing it exactly the same. So it might be worth a quick conversation first to say, hey, are you change it up for underneath the solos to that other other feel or whatever. Um, you know, or just use your ears and and listen and they go, oh, they've changed to that. But I know it already. I learned this tune, right? So that's the kind of thing, that the level of detail you want to, to absorb for this kind of tune, I think. I always get asked about the gear that I'm using for the particular video. So this uh, particular one, I'm using a late 60s uh, Gibson 335. Uh, it's there's no pedals or anything. It's just going straight into a Kemper profiler, which is kind of a an amp emulating tool, uh, a pretty high end one that sounds to me as close as a real amp. You know, I've got loads of great amps here, but this thing sounds just as good. Uh, I'm using a 62 Lux profile, okay, which is made by a guy called Michael Britt, who makes incredible Kemper profiles. Uh, you know, it sounds. Uh, just as good as the Fender Deluxe that I've got, so that's I tend to use this just uh, massively convenient. But that's all. There's there's a little bit of built-in reverb on on the Kemper Profiler, and that's it. There's no other pedals being used at all. So uh, anyway, hope you enjoyed this lesson, and I'll see you for plenty more very soon. Do subscribe to my channel if you dig what I do, and remember it's all really well organised over on the website, so you might want to go and check that out too. See you for more very soon. Bye bye.